Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at debugging our Rails application. So in the previous episode, we covered doing some logging, we covered adding in the better errors for when we find an error page. In this episode, we're going to actually handle running a debugger. Now this is going to have a couple different requirements because we're using VS Code in this example. If you're using a different editor, you're going to have different instructions, but I feel like a lot of people use VS Code for stuff, so we're going to cover in here. So the basic idea is we need to install a couple extensions and we also need to make sure what Ruby version we're on so that we're getting the right extensions. Um, so in my case, I'm using Ruby 3.0.3. Uh, I feel like anything past that is fine. Uh, so that's good. The other thing we have to do is come into our extensions and we're going to want to look for, let me see if I can find it. We're going to want to look for the Ruby extension. So just make sure this is installed. I'm not entirely sure if this is required, uh, but this is one of the things listed when I looked up how to do debugging uh, and I've had it installed ever since. So just make sure you do this. The other thing you're gonna want is a gem that we have to install. And you can either do a bundle add for this or you can just install it yourself. Uh, you're going to want to do a gem install and it's going to be the ruby dash debug. Let me make sure I bump up the font size a bit. Ruby dash debug dash IDE. And then we can go ahead and run that. And then you're also going to need a gem install for D, uh, debase or debase, whatever you want to call it. And then you can go ahead and install that. Now, alternatively, you can, of course, add these as a bundle. So you could just say bundle add Ruby dash debug dash IDE, and then you can do that. And then we can add in the debase one as well. And the reason why I'm adding them in like this is just so that they exist in the gem file. Uh, that way, if someone looks at the repository online, they can see these listed in there. So this is more just for the sake of documenting what I'm doing. And you can see here they're getting added. So let me go ahead and exit out of this. I'll come into the gem file. I'll hit control B to hide the side panel. I'll come down here. I'll grab both of these. And actually we can just grab these and move these up into our uh, development and test block. We'll just put them in here. So that's good to go. And here's our better errors and our binding of color. So we'll just leave those there as well. And I'll just put a wrapper around these. It just says these are for the debugger. And then we'll come down here and say end debugger gems. Always good to make sure your stuff is documented in case someone finds this online. So now we have these. The next thing we have to do is create the uh, like run configuration or the launch configuration. Uh, because right now this isn't actually going to do anything. So to create this, I don't quite remember how. Um, let me maybe look it up real quick. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is go over to, uh, it looks like it's the run and debug tab. So control shift D if you're on Windows. And then you're gonna want to create a launch.json file. Uh, you're gonna wanna use Ruby. In my case, it's suggested. You're then going to want to do a Rails server. Now you can of course do whatever you'd like and just configure it manually. But if you just click Rails server, it's gonna do a whole bunch of stuff for you. So here you can see it gives me a version and then it gives me a configuration. In the configuration, you can see it's just called Rails server, don't really care. Ruby, don't really care. The request is to launch, also don't care. Now the program it's running is just in your workspace. So this is considered the workspace at the same level as your .vs code. It's then looking in slash bin slash rails. So we go into bin and then we can find rails right here. So it's coming into here. And then once it's inside of this workspace, it's then going to run the args. So you can see here, it says args of server by default. So if we just go ahead and run this, we can say rails server. I know we type rails s all the time, but this is actually what it's doing. It's using the full server command. So we now have this very basic setup, which we can try to run. And the way we run this is we can, uh, if I full screen this, I can't say I can't full screen it like that. If we come up here to run, we're going to want to run and click start debugging. You can run this configuration. You'll see this bar down here turn orange. And then if we come over to our run and debug window, you'll see that it looks to be running. So uh, now let's move this over here. I'll hit, uh, I guess, control B or no, I'll leave this open. We can come over here, we can refresh the page. I'll make sure I'm on the right port. 
and we should hopefully see something start up. So here's our server. This is our server. It's running in development and we have our debugger running, but there's really nothing happening. So let's test this by coming into, in my case, I'm just going to come into the controller for this page. So this is just my pages controller, I think, and then it's my home action. I have some stuff in here, but no one really cares. Uh, just create a new controller, add a debug line, test it with that breakpoint. So we're going to use the breaks breakpoint right here. Uh, and then I'm actually going to go back to the home page. I'm going to refresh. And apparently I'm going to hit a breakpoint somewhere in here in the logger. We don't care about that. So instead of running it at the logger, I'm going to run it at the first return and then I'm going to click the continue button. And you can see here we're now debugging just like you would any other language. Why it's so convoluted, I don't know, but it works. If we come into our local and our self over here, we can even see all the different variables that we have. So here's our Ahoy tracker because we're using Ahoy for analytics. We have a current user. The current user has a whole bunch of stuff. You can see the primary keys. You can see uh, that it's using the pay for Stripe. And uh, you know we have the nav categories, which is in our nav bar, we have our categories. And then we have a whole, a whole bunch of scheduled categories I probably need to delete. A couple things to note here is it's really helpful if you're trying to step through an application for the first time. So uh, I can walk you through this. If, if you're a beginner and you're, you're trying to figure out how you get familiar with a code base at work, this is sort of how I do it. So what I'll do is uh, I'll just start the server in, in manual mode real quick. Um, what I'll do in a new application is I'll come in here and I'll say, okay, I've been given a ticket. Uh, my boss wants me to, I don't know, manage the portfolio page. What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, I want to figure out where, uh, I don't know, this back button is, right? So I come into what I, or I guess the first thing I do is I hit control shift F to search. And then I just search for portfolio. I find something that looks vaguely like the portfolio page. Uh, and then maybe I try to debug from there. So in this case, this isn't going to make any sense. I'm putting a debug or a breakpoint into the uh, nav bar. Uh, but of course, th this will still work. Uh, if we just run this, actually, we can just check, run the debugger, and then we'll come over, uh, stop this, and then oops, we'll run the debugger again, start debugging. I guess we could have also attached it to that session. But if we come over here and refresh now, you should see that this starts the debugger. We hit the breakpoint here on the portfolio. So nothing's going to happen here, of course, because it doesn't make any sense to put the breakpoint there. But if you uh, search long and hard, you might find something uh, like the uh, projects path right here. So we know this goes to the projects path, it's portfolio, maybe instead of portfolio, this needs to be the projects. So I come in here and I say, Okay, where are my projects coming from? Well, I have a projects controller. So I'll open up the projects controller. And then in the projects controller, maybe I want to figure out um, where does the I don't know, index method get fired, right? Like this is obviously stuff that you're going to see right away, because it's a pretty simple application. But if we go ahead and we start debugging, and we go back to the home page, what I'll do then is I'll just click around until I figure out where this happens. And this is pretty slow. But if you're brand new, you're like a new junior developer, you have a smaller application, eventually, you're going to find a page, it's going to be this projects page. And then you're going to see you hit your breakpoint. So now you're like, okay, well, now I know this page is doing this thing. So if I click continue, I'm on the, the projects page. So now in here, I'm just going to go around. I'm going to add breakpoints everywhere until I find something, right? And then I'm going to click on like my, my show page and nothing's going to happen. And then maybe I just, I don't know, type some nonsense in here, like uh, sure, at project equals that. And then I add in a breakpoint uh, and then I stop the server. And then I'll add in a breakpoint right there. And then I'll go ahead and run this in debug mode, which I guess I can just hit F5 for. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll run this in debug mode. And I'll come over here and I'll refresh the page again. And then hopefully I'll hit a breakpoint. And I hit a breakpoint. And now I'm like, okay, well, now I know that this is definitely happening in the show page. And, you know, some basic Rails knowledge might take me to the actual view. So that's interesting. But uh, sometimes you run into some more advanced problems like uh, you don't really know how much of this I can talk about. But uh, the place I worked at previously, uh, we had to have some applications talk to each other. And uh, it required a whole bunch of port to port nonsense that we had to figure out. So maybe you need to run your Rails app on a different port and you want to run the debugger on a specific port. Who knows why? Just pretend it's a problem you run into. So uh, we know that we can, of course, run our Rails apps with Rails S, and then we can pass in additional flags, right? 
So we can do, I don't know, something like dash B to set it to bind to 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0. And we can see right here, localhost uh, 0 .0 .0 .0, uh, except it's not actually localhost, it's that 0, .0 stuff. So we can get rid of that and just put in localhost port 3000, it'll work just the same way. So that's one thing we can do. Uh, the other thing we can do, uh, aside from setting the IP, is we can say Rails S dash, I think it's dash P, to do port 3001 if we want to. So we run this, this will start the Rails app, it'll start on that server, and then we just come over here, localhost port 3001, and now we're running it on a different port, right? Uh, the other thing we can do, maybe we want to run our Rails server, as a different environment. Maybe when we debug, we want to run it in the test environment. So we go ahead and we run Rails S-E with test, and that'll start up the test server. Come over here, refresh the page. This will probably blow up because I don't think I've ever set up the database for testing, uh, but I forgot to set it to port 3000. It looks like that works. It's a shocker to me, but cool. Uh, so we can do that and we can combine all of those, but how do we get it to do that when we're debugging? Because right now, if we come over here, we run and we start debugging, um, it's, I mean, it's going to try and attach to this and then it's just going to fail out. So we probably want this to work just like, uh, our commands are right here. Well, if we come into our explore, our VS code and our launch settings inside of our launch settings, we have our args. We can just pass in additional arguments. So maybe we want to do a dash P and have this run on port 3001, or maybe we don't even want it to run on port 3001. Let's try running it on, I don't know, port 15,000, for example. Uh, I'm gonna hit F5, I guess, to start debugging. And we're gonna see if this works or if this blows up. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go to localhost port 15,000. And then we're on localhost port 15,000. That's working just fine. Uh, so of course we can add in our additional arguments. We want to not just go to port 15,000 when we run this, but in this launch configuration, we also want to run this in uh, our test environment. We also maybe, oops, dash E. And of course, for all of these, I'm pretty sure you can just do like port and then you can do like bind or whatever. Let's just go ahead and try this. We'll try it with environment test and we'll see if this works because we're here to, to learn. So I'll go ahead and I'll run the debugger again. That didn't like it. So I'm gonna go back to maybe it's like dash dash E and dash dash P, I don't know. We'll try this one more time. If this doesn't work, we'll just uh, move on. So I'll go over here and I'll refresh the page. It looks like that's it. So it wants the double dashes if it's a complete word. And then for the last one, we can do dash dash binding and then we can pass in our IP address that we wanna to bind to. So maybe we wanna bind this to, I don't know, 192.168.0.1. I have no idea if that's gonna work, but it's always fun to try. So we'll stop the server, hit F5 again to restart it. And then we'll try to go over to, yeah, it didn't like that. So let's just go back to 0.0. .0. We'll do 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 and we'll save that. And then we'll hit F5 or we can come up here to run and start debugging to try to run this as uh, in this mode. So now we're going to localhost port 15,000 and we're in the test environment by default. Maybe we wanna change this environment to be production. Go ahead and save that, stop this, and then we'll launch it again and we'll see what happens. Maybe it'll blow up because I've never set up the production database. And there we go, we're getting an error. So we know it's doing something. So now uh, this error is probably because we need to migrate our production database. And we learned last time we have logs, we can come into our production logs. You can see here, uh, we don't have a production database configured, right? Uh, issue with your username and password. Uh, so let's come into our explorer, our config, and our database.yaml. And we can see in here that our development database has one set of configurations and our production has something else. It's expecting a prod DB username, which probably doesn't exist. So that, that's the basic idea. You have your launch settings.json. You have this debugger. This debugger is fantastic if you need to figure out how stuff works. You can, of course, just dive really deep into how some of these things work. Maybe you come into your registrations controller. Uh, let me actually come into our launch settings real quick. I'm gonna change this back to development and I'll change this to port uh, 3000 and I'll leave this as 0.0. .0. We'll save this, we'll close it. And then in our, like, I don't know, our sessions controller, maybe inside of here, we wanna see what happens when we create a new session. So we just come in here, we add a uh, breakpoint, right? 
Then we can save this. I'll hit F5 to start debugging and then I'll go to port 3000 just to get this working. And now I'll come in here and I'll click login. And as soon as I click login, we go into this uh, def new method. Now I wanna see how this works. I could go Google what the device controller looks like, or I can click the little down arrow to step into this super call. So I step into the super, it takes me into a path right here, uh, which is very involved, but basically this is inside of our gems, Ruby 3.0.3 gems device. And then inside of device, this is located in app controllers, device sessions controller. So this is actually the source code that's running. So in here, we can see when we create a new session, we have our self.resource is equal to resource class. We clean up our passwords. We do a yield. Of course, you don't really know what any of this stuff means, right? But we can, you know, step over this first one, go down into the next line, and then figure out what cleanup passwords means. So we step into this, takes us into this resource. That seems fine. And then here's our cleanup passwords. So it calls object at cleanup passwords if object responds to cleanup passwords. And then maybe you want to step into this to see what respond to means. And then you keep going from there and you sort of see how this works. If you ever get yourself into a bad loop, you just click restart and restart the whole application, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, yeah, so hopefully this is helpful. I mean, this certainly is a helpful tool for me, at least. Uh, I can click continue and it'll start the app. Um, but yeah, so it's really helpful to be able to pop in and just see what the code looks like underneath, especially with a tool like Rails, where it seems like half the stuff is just magic anyways. Uh, but even in other languages, it's always great to have a debugger. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this is reliable. If at any point your server starts being weird, one of the things you can try and do is a PS aux. And uh, basically what this is gonna do, it's just gonna tell you everything that's running on your computer. You can see I have a whole bunch of crap here. No one cares though. So what you can do is a PS aux and then a G rep for Puma, which is our Rails server. So right now we have our debugger running. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type kill dash nine and I'm going to type uh, whatever this number is right here for the PID, I believe. So we'll grab this number, copy it with right click or you can just type it, we'll hit enter. And then as soon as I do that, you'll see that the server stops. So if your server is ever not starting because it says something's already running, just do that. Come in here, start debugging again, and your application should hopefully start working again. Uh, that was one of the issues I ran into. So your kill dash nine, and then your process ID is probably the best way to do it, which you get by typing uh, PS aux, and then your pipe, and then grep puma. But yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, you know, hopefully you get something out of this and hopefully I see you in the next tutorial.